history and purpose of the Freemasons and other secret societies. If you patiently read the following paragraphs of historical explanation, you may come to an understanding of the hidden histories of nature and science. Then we can discuss Freemasonry and you will see truths. Your worshipful master has never contemplated. From the Garden of Eden, a battle has raged between two deadly enemies. The battle began when Lucifer incarnate the serpent, a man-like creature, great giant of a fellow, until God changed every bone in his body and put him upon his belly. Lucifer, being God's right-hand man, knew that God's plan was to bow the kingdom knowing it would be inherited by Michael or Christ he began he became jealous and set about gaining it for himself God commanded man to multiply fulfill and subdue the earth and to have dominion over it but by his wisdom Lucifer knew that as the seed of a horse can fertilize a donkey to produce the hybrid mule God never created, so the seed of the serpent could fertilize the woman and create an hybrid species uncreated by God. And whenever the offspring of Eve by the serpent intermingle with the seed of Eden, the progeny, the progeny would always be serpent seed and not on the book of life. So in Corley, he incarnate the serpent and seduced thee. From that time to this, there has been two races of people on this earth, the seed of Cain and the seed of Eden. Cain was begun of that wicked one, 1 John 3, 12. Abel was the son of Eden who was the only son of God. Luke 3.38 God placed enmity, that's hatred between us. Lucifer, Lucifer knew that by miscegenation he could exterminate the seed of Eden and thus fall heir of the kingdom of Christ. In the time of Noah, God destroyed the world with the flood because of miscegenation between the races of Adam and Cain. The serpent seen was in the ark and it is with us to this day. It populated the land of Canaan and afterwards spread throughout the world. Genesis 10:18. God made a covenant with Abraham and promise is seen would inherit the land of Canaan. As the promise unfolded, we find it um, Abraham's seed was not to be Ishmael, but would come through his wife Sarah. Their son Isaac had twins. Isaac's firstborn, Isaac, sold his birthright to his younger brother, Jacob. Isaac then married two serpent seed women and an Ishmaelite whose offspring intermarried with the serpent seed. Thus Israel committed genocide for that was the end of the Edemic lineage in Israel whose nations be whose nation became known as Edom. Edom is the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. Malachi 1 4. It disappeared from history through miscegenation with Israel and has assumed the name Jew. God told Moses when Israel conquers the land, they must utterly slay all of its serpent seeds habitants. Israel were disobedient and eventually found themselves dominated and ruled by these people. From before the days of Christ, 
there was intense hatred between Rome and the Jews. Jacob and Israel strove together in Rebekah's womb, and then Israel was born. Jacob grasped him by the heel, the hatred and rivalry between these two enemies of God is to this day the root of Hertz geopolitical struggles. When the ten tribes of the northern kingdom began worshipping the pagan trinity, he dispersed them by the Assyrians. Assyrians. Later, when the southern kingdom adopted the pagan worship, God sent Nebuchadnezzar to destroy Israel and the temple and take the people captive to Babylon. At the end of the captivity, many of the Hebrew people declined to return. Remaining in Babylon, they intermarried and assimilated so that to, uh, for the next 1500 years, Babylon and not Jerusalem was Israel's theological headquarters. Whilst the returnees brought with them the Babylonian fractional reserve banking system usury calendar the synagogue form of worship rabbis kabbalah and the beginnings of the talmud and pharisianism pharisianism john ercanus judas high priest seeking perhaps to heal the breach between the, the descendants of Esau and Jacob forcibly converted the Edomites or Edomines to Judaism. In 37 BC, Herod the Great succeeded John when the Romans made him ruler of all Judea, now called Edomia, because of the overwhelming number of Edomites in the population. Herod was an Edomian who married into John's family, the Maccabees. Thus, by the time of Christ, the majority of Jews were unrelated to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob by blood, and certainly not by faith. The religion of the Judeans was no longer the law and the prophets, but the traditions of the elders, which had been compiled as the Babylonian Talmud by about AD 500. This Babylonian religion called Pharisaism became Talmudism. In turn, Talmudism became medieval rabbinism, which became modern rabbinism we call to Judaism today. Lucifer was trying to steal the kingdom from Jesus Christ by the same ploy he used in the Garden of Eden. Miscegenation. Isaiah's descendants controlled the temple through the dominance of the Pharisees and their Edomite king rule under Rome. They had assumed or stolen the identity of those so-called chosen people between commas and were certainly not willing to receive a messiah and king from the house of David. This was why Herod tried to kill all the boys under from three from two years of age and less. Matthew two sixteen. Who killed the Lord Jesus? The Bible says it was the chief priests and Pharisees who accused him and cried, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Their hatred has not abated. Over the centuries today, pagan Esau Edom, who is not even on the Book of Life, continues to affront God and to persecute Jacob Israel. The spirit of Satan permeated the four Gentile empires of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, destroying each from within. Finally, a penetrating Christendom has once he infiltrated and usurped the Old Testament priesthood, 
transforming Imperian, imperial Roman rule into a false religious power with the organization of the pagan Roman Catholic Church at the first Nicaea Council of AD 325. Any student of history knows that the few Christians who attended Nicaea left before the council set for apostate Jews who controlled the proceedings had arranged their usual alien false alternative of thesis and antithesis in the form of two heresies as Satan has set the Sadducees and the Pharisees before Jesus in later Paul. Here is set the heretics Arius and his Unitarianism and Athanasius and is Trinitarian together with their followers in opposition against one another, the Christians and God. The Babylonian, Babylonian form of worship was introduced into nominal common Christianity with the organization of the Roman Universal Church, their false trinity of gods and false water baptism in three titles instead of in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible denying the Nicene Creed and Church-State Union, soon the controlled state church was killing all who refused Rome's false trinity and water baptism. So, scores, scores of millions were martyred through almost a thousand years of dark ages. Throughout the past 2,000 years, Satan's military, in the guise of the cell-style Jews, who are basically physical serpents, seeds hybrid, has per persecuted the natural seed of a Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who are Hebrews and Genuine Israelites. Then, in the shape of the Roman Catholic false church, whose sons are spiritual serpent seed, bastard born children of her creed, hybrid with God's word. It has persecuted the spiritual seed of Abraham, the true church made up of both Israelites and Gentiles. Both of them hail from Babylon, and if you are Mason, who have studied the craft, you will realize that much of its allegory is drawn from pagan mythology. This mythology, sorry, this mythology originated in Chaldea, Babylon, spread to Egypt, and from there the Hebrews received it. The major sources of information are in the records of Egyptian and Grecian culture. Egypt received her science and mathematics from the Chaldeans and Greece received hers from Egypt. Since the priests were in charge of teaching these sciences and they form a part of their religion, we know how the Babylonish religion gained its strength in these two countries. And whenever one nation was unable to subdue another, in due time, the religion of the subduer became the religion of the subdued. As it is well known, the Greeks had the same signs of the zodiac as the Babylonians, and according to the ancient Egyptian records, the Egyptians gave the Greeks their knowledge of polytheism. Thus, the Babylonian mystery spread from nation to nation until in Rome, China, India, and even in North and South America, we find the same basic worship. The battle between the children of God and the children of disobedience is raging today, and there are myriad levels of in initiation or battle friends into this conspiracy, which is executing a secret plan of darkness, even as God's holy Bible is unfolding the mystery of light and true illumination. As a consequence, we encounter numerous secret societies or societies with secrets, which all ultimately serve the same master. The three great 
distinguishing principles of secret societies or of secrecy. Their pecul peculiar emphasis on benevolence and their system of regalia, badges, rank, and formalities, as well as many incidental practices that are radically false and plainly opposed to sound reason and the word of God. Jesus said in, to the high priest, I spoke of it openly to the world, and in secret I have said nothing. John 18, 20. Jesus foretold, as it was in the days of Noah, this accursed high breeding will repeat in the days of my parousia or coming. Matthew 24, 37 to 41. For 20 centuries, the Jews between commas have never ceased to reiterate their rejection of Jesus. With concentrated intensity, they've been themselves into the task of assaulting the church which he founded and in which he lives. This purpose and their persecution of natural Israel has bound them together into a stubborn alien knot that refuses to be dissolved into any society. Through a rabbit warren of secret societies, the whole boundaries have been broken down and we see the open conspiracy drawn up by Fabian socialist H. G. Wells transform into our, in our sight. The enemies of the first and the second Adam are behind all this. Rather than being God's chosen between commas, they are his accursed. Satan is using them to, f to work his purposes. Stolen waters of sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant between commas. The smug conceit of secret knowledge between commas which, with which she hoped to teach her innocent husband caused Eve to stumble and fall from grace. Eve at acquired carnal knowledge, but with it came death. Through spiritual revelation of faith from God is life and peace. God is trying to unveil his secrets through intimate faith, not second-hand learning. Does it matter if these, there are secrets and secret societies? Is there anything wrong with being a member of secret societies? When asked such questions, those who belong to secret society frequent, frequently deny their membership. When the motive for belonging is, re is requested, it is said that their purpose in joining was for fellowship and connection, and the larger the secret society, the more connections. However, in the case of a secret society like Yale School and Bones, we don't have a large membership. It is power that drowns one to bones. Secret societies frequently determine in the depths of the changes that take place on the surface. Archer Edward Waite, quoted by A. Ralph Efferson, The Unseen Hand, 1955, eh, 1985, page 126. William Edward Smith suggests that anything that is good should not be kept secret. Anything, and anything kept secret is not to the benefit whether to, it, is, it be good or bad, as it tends to the breach of our constitution and the establishment of arbitrary power in Christianity and secret societies, 1936-25, John 3:19. Americans have long held to the view that things should be done in public view. The very idea of a secret government once known to Americans is anathema. Yet there is a very long history of things being secret, including the convention that established the U.S. Constitution. There is also a little known history that includes the concept on unwritten laws and oral traditions, which with allegiance being made to unknown superiors and masters. 
This Babylonian form of heathen hall pervading power was adopted by the Talmudic Jews and later infused as Christian theology by their Roman Catholic system of false worship. Those who meet in secret conclave appear to have an aversion for paramount written constitutions that every citizen is capable of reading and knowing. The secret society is generally based on an on a hierarchy afraid of discovery, with secret membership, meetings and oaths, claims of brotherhood, and unknown superiors. The Council of Foreign Affairs, Bilderbergers, Federal Reserve Board, and the Trilateral Commission all meet in secret. However, membership lists are available for each of these groups except of the, for the Bilderbergers. Perhaps one of the earliest stories we have learned is about the Greeks and their Trojan horse. When the walls of Troy were found to be too strong to breach, the Greeks bowed a tall wooden horse and left it outside the city. Jubilant and seeing, at seeing the Greeks depart, the Trojans opened their gates and let the horse come in. They celebrated and slept. In the middle of the night, the Greeks came out of the belly of the horse, opened the gates, and took the city. The principle of vigilance and the surprise attack. Those who are weaker or wish to have lower casualties attack without warning as cats sneak up on their prey, which might otherwise outrun them. The ancient Spartans built a military machine capable not only of suppressing revolts but of nipping them in the mud. Michael Chiklik, Ancient in Story 1969, five magistrate overseers or ephori were elected each year. Warned, page 103. The ephori were five secret despots, despots or supreme judges of the system invented by Chilon, a wise man of Greece. They trained a number of young men as assassins and ordered them to be ready at any minute with dangers of Wale Helots, as enslaved Greeks, and butcher them in sufficient numbers to keep down the labor force to a schedule tabulated at their political council. The Ifori had boundless authority. Osborne Ward II, the ancient lowly 1910, page 95. One of the functions of the Ifori was to see that the ambuscades were carried out. Ward, page 104. The ambuscades were accomplished at moments of the profoundest peace and when the innocent victims were productive. Ward, page 102. The Ifori trained that a number of young aristocratic men armed themselves with daggers and secretly sneak off into the mountains and jungles with knapsacks of provisions. They were called together by governors, the toilers, who were without arms or any means of defense, were then set upon by the assassins. War, page 104. Plutarch wrote, The governors of the youth ordered the shreddest of them from time to time to disperse themselves in the country provided only with daggers and some necessary provisions. In the daytime, they hid themselves and rested in the most private places they could find, but at night they sailed out into the roads and killed all the elots they could meet with. Nay, sometimes by day, they fell, they fell upon them in the fields and murdered the ablest and strongest of them, ward Page 105. Periander advised 
Tracy Bullos to cut off the tops of the tallest ears of corn. Aristotle's Politics and Poetics 146, translated by J Benjamin Jowett and Thomas Twining 1952, Book 5. 10. The efforts armed certain young Spartans as a special and secret police, the Charybdia, empowered by spy, upon the people and to kill Elots and their discretion at their discretion Durant at eighty. If you read both books of the Maccabees you will discover whom the Spartans were where they were. They were not Greek. They were not Greeks but Jews. The Elots were spied upon all the time. At intervals the most outstanding of the Elots were killed as a way of cutting down leadership before it could organize it could organize a revolt. Milton Metzer at eighty seven Plutarch mentions that sometimes large numbers of slaves were lured by the plea of a festival or aunt, and when gathered to an convenient spot were felt upon and murdered by the hundreds to get rid of the dangerous element. Was born Ward, one the ancient lowly, nineteen ten, page eighty six. To see, to see, Dides mentioned the invitation being made to the Elots to pick out those who were most distinguished for freedom, as it was thou that the first to claim their freedom would be the most high spirited and the most apt to rebel. As many as two thousand were selected accordingly, who crowned themselves and went around the temples rejoicing of their new freedom. The Spartans, however, soon afterwards did away with them, and no one ever knew how each of them perished during. Two Cydides told of the time during the Pelo. Ponesian War when they when there were no more soldiers to be had from among the Spartans, the Perio EC or recognized citizens recruiting was then done from the much more numerous laborious class. Thousands were marshaled and drilled into the army. Then gallantly bore light arms and were victorious. Over two thousand proved worthiest of liberty. These were enfranchised and marched into a temple of, or field to take the oath of freedom. Instead, they were massacred. The Ephi made a secret declaration of war and armed the young men with daggers. With daggers, all disappeared forever. Warm page 105 to 108. The ancient Arabic orders novel of the mystic shrine also has a claim to extraordinary connections like the Jesuits toward events. Indeed, some of the major figures associated with the order have included Sir Francis Bacon. Born 1561, dead 1626. Baruch Spinoza, born 1632, died in 1677. Frederick the Great, born in 1712, died in 1786. Gabriel Riccati, Mirobeau, 1749, that was a birth, date of birth died in 1791. Immanuel Kant, born in 1724, died in 1804. Joanne Wolfgang von Goethe, 1749, date of birth, died in 1832. Giuseppe Garibaldi, born in 1807, died in 1882, and even Frank, 
Franklin D. Roosevelt, born in 1882, died in 1945, a 33rd degree Mason. Michael Howard, The Occult Conspiracy, 1989, page 93. To a state of abnegation, which shall in all things make them willing tools, in short, reduce them to a set of fools. Jesuit saying, quoted by Charles William Eckerton, Volume 1, Secret Societies, 1965, page 285. In 1534, the Society of Jesuits, or Jesuits, was founded by Ignatius Loyola, born in 1491, died in 1556, a Marano, and five associates, James Trager, The People's Chronology, 1979, page 176. During the 16th century, confession became a religious duty that was required to be diligently observed. Edmond Paris, The Secret Society, The Secret History of the Jesuits, 1975, page 63. Through the confessional, the Jesuits secured lasting political influence. Ibidem, page 34. King Ferdinand was dominated by his Jesuits confessor, Ibidem, page 36. The main two weapons used by Loyola's order were, one, to be the confessors of the mighty and those of high places, and two, to be the educators of their children, Ibidem, page 27. From the beginning, the order was prepared to treat the sinner gently, forgiveness, forgiveness lapse into slackness, Ibidem, page 63. The maxim was a, that was applied that the hand justified the means. Ibidem, page 32. The prophecy formed the fourth and highest grade of the Jesuit order. They alone were initiated into all the secret of the order. Charles William Ackerton, The Secret Societies, 1965, page 286. The Jesuit oath states, In the name of Christ crucified, I swear to burst the bounds that yet unite me, unite me to father, mother, brothers, sisters, relations, friends, to the king, magistrates, and any other authority to which I may ever have sworn filthy obedience, gratitude, or service, I renounce. The place of my birth, elsewhere, to exist in another sphere, I swear to reveal to my new superior, whom I desire to know, what I have done, taught, read, learned, or discovered, and to observe and watch all that comes under my notice. I swear to yell myself up to my superior as if I were a corpse, deprived of life and will. I finally swear to flee temptation and to reveal all I succeed in discovering, well aware that lightning is not more rapid and ready than the dagger to reach me whenever I may flee. Ibadan, page 287 to 288. The Jesuits openly advocated tyrannicide whenever the tyrant was against them. Ibadan, Page 289. The Book of Secreta Monita contained the secret instructions of the Society of Jesuits. Ibidem, page 289. At the time of the founding of the Jesuits, Germany had completely fallen away from popery. Theodor Freisinger, the Jesuits, a complete history of their open and secret proceedings from the foundation of the order to the present time 1892 page 211 francis bacon was a rosiclusian initiate nesta h webster secret societies and subversive movements 1920 
Goncourt, page 97. In fact, he founded the Rose Croix under, or oh, sorry, I, he, in fact, we're talking about Francis Bacon. In fact, he founded the Rose Croix Order in England, Lady Queenborough, page 153. His book, The New Atlantis, was published a year after his death in 1627, or World, page 74. In The New Atlantis, he referred to keepers of a secret tradition that Moses, by a secret Kabbalah, ordained the law of Bessalem. Webster, page 119. Bessalem was Bacon's fictional island. He formulated a philosophical system. G. N. Learn Theory, Learn History of the World, 1914, page 651. Bacon influenced America education is such as John Dewey. He was a utopian who created a blueprint for the Golden Age. As Chancellor of England, he persuaded King James to issue charters for English colonies in the New World. Award page 76. The elements of secrecy in particu is particularly relevant, relevant, <laughs> get it, relevant in the world of money. Francis Bacon once said, "If money be not thy servant, it will be thy master." The close relationship between national banks and government debt historically has been kept secret because it is a basically immoral arrangement of mutual greed and convenience. A banking system is so closely associated with public borrowing and with what is almost the oldest and most jealously guarded function of the state, the issue of money, that governments can seldom afford to leave it entirely unlicensed and uncontrolled. Sir John Clapham, the Bank of England, 2, 1945, 34 LQ, Review, 1918. The state soon found that its business was one of the undertakings which a bank would finance for privileges which it would give. A long existing and self perpetuating tax immune internationalist and transnational group that uses funds with interlocking corporate and or fraternal groups of individuals whose membership is either secret or semi secret with undisclosed ownership shares has usurped the sovereignty of borrowing national governments who serve their lenders. It includes largely unrevealed yet reported campaign contributors who also control the media and press, all majors of political parties and dictates presidential appointments. It abhors the direct issuance of money by elected officials and through the creation of a system of privately owned and control central banks holds all the world's gold and all loan and mortgage paperwork. Its business is conducted in secret meetings which determine the future of all national economies and the timing of expansion through loans or contraction through tight money policy, no loans. It exercises an exclusive monopoly on the issuance of money created out of thin hair and issued solely as that does not create money to repay interest but lays off perpetual national deaths that consume future income, which under international law cannot be repudiated even by an internal revolution. At least for others, it tends to be pro bureaucracy, pro abortion, population control, pro government education, anti family, anti nationalists, 
anti-inheritance, anti-private property, and anti-Jesus Christ. This group can demand special privileges and even military force to collect national debts. It plans to soon accomplish global disarmament of both civilians and nations and have a, motoli, an, a monopoly of force, including nuclear weapons. It has the privilege of a guaranteed untaxable income and forced banning of all public and personal property and collected by coercive force of the taxing structure of the dif different governments. When the wing, the Whig politicians submitted the merchant's plan to the English Parliament in, in 1691, it included the following components, the name of those who had loaned money to the government in the last 70 years were to remain secret, to the charter members of the Bank of England would be granted a perpetual right to appoint the directors. Three, the banks would make loans to the value of 10 pounds for every one pound it had on deposit on its vaults by the way of paper currency. Four, the bank would be emitted, uh, sorry, permitted to consolidate the national debt and secure payments of amounts due by way of direct taxation or levy upon the people until the debt was fully discharged. 5. That no other bank would be the agent for the constitutional treasury of England. In 6. That no bank would be incorporated or chartered except with the approval or participation of the Bank of England. F. Fred Kirkland and Paul L. Burton Creative Fraud, 1976, page 25. The first Grand Lodge of Freemasonry was founded in England in 1717, 23 years after the founding of the Bank of England, which had a secret court of directors. Direct, sorry, directors. The creation of this lodge is a millstone in the transformation of what was a trade guild into a secret society. The Rothschild family became allied with Freemasonry in the late 1700s. By cooperating with secret societies, they were able to expand their banking operations from Germany, networking the political contacts of Freemasonry, which was already well established throughout the continent. Freemasonry, on the other hand, need money to finance its efforts to build a new world order, and the Rothschilds would be able to provide such funds. Proceedings of the U.S. Anti-Masonic Convention, 80, 1830, page 32, no, get it, 33, declare me Freemasonry was instituted to dupe the simple for the benefit of the crafty. Freemason, Freemasons are intensely focused on maintaining secrecy and will retaliate against those who violate their oaths or transgress against broader Masons. The legend of Aram Abif, the Masonic Christ figure, describes how Aram was killed while keeping a Masonic secret. His brother, Freemasons, killed Aram's Assyrians and raise harem from the grave. Freemasons are encouraged to model themselves after Hiram and hold their Masonic secrets. If they remain true to their oaths like Haram, they should expect to be avenged from for such attacks and rewarded for their fidelity to the Brotherhood. While cases exist suggesting the murder of opponents of Masonic, Miss Freemasonry, Masonic ritual states that the more effective penalty for doing anything displeasing to Masonry is to be shunned by the entire Brotherhood, a penalty sufficient to bring a man to ruin. The more certainly so as Freemasonry was 
as expanded into every profession and every branch of society. Stephen Knight, The Brotherhood, 1984, 1984, page 31. Like other secret societies, the Freemasons have their own written constitutions. In the Scottish Rite Petition for Admission of the Mis to the Mysteries, question number 26, 26 asks, Do you promise upon your honor to strictly adhere to and to be governed by the Constitution and laws of the Grand Lodge of Texas and by the bylaws of this lodge? Question number 39 asks, Do you seriously declare upon your honor that you will cheerfully conform to the ancient established usages and customs of masonry. And Mona Rone Yu described the requirement of obedience to all laws and edicts. First, the candidate is made to swear eternal obedience to all Masonic laws and edicts, and without having to the slightest knowledge of any one of them. Then the law, peremptorily excluding the name of Christ, is submitted for his acceptance. And lastly, in perfect harmony with the requirements of his Masonic obligation, a blind, implicit, unwavering obedience to this law is demanded of him, whether right or wrong. The Master's Carpet, 1879. It is even claimed that the teachings of Freemasonry are summarily thus obey Masonic law and give uh, sorry <laughs> obey Masonic law and live Reverend C. G. Finney the character claims and practical workings of Freemasonry 1869 page 2130 as it had been said those who overstep the constitution of the U.S. government by joining secret societies and take their judicial oaths to secretly uphold their members in so far as they can when they design and purpose and purposes conflict with our constitutions and laws should be treated as traitors of the government and deprived of their franchise as citizens. William Edward Smith, Christianity and Secret Societies, 1936-25 while not, while not overtly encouraged to participate in criminal activity, Freemasons were sworn to protect the broader Freemasons should they engage in immoral and criminal conduct. The Royal Arch Mission swore I will aid and assist a companion royal archmason when engaged in any difficulty and espouse his cause so far as extricate him from the same, if in my power, whether to be right or wrong. A companion royal archmason secrets given me in charge as, as such, and I knowing him to be such shall remain as secure and inviolable in my breast as in his own murder and treason not accepted etc the address of the u.s anti-masonic convention 1830 page 9 in summary according to the freemasonic critics freemasonry is a brotherhood or more happily a cult which mandates secrecy and obedience within its ranks, accords protection and advancements of the interests of its members, punishes its enemies and turns a blind eye to criminal behavior committed by its members against non-members. Freemasonry provides a value system and an organized structure which works to put broader masons in position of power and in all organizations and can be used by its members for the most immoral and illegal purposes. Its foundation appears to rest upon the willingness of its members to selfishly exchange their ethics for personal advantage. 
its train appears to lie in a pervasive presence unseen by those outside the brotherhood working in concert to protect and expand their wealth and power. If we believe the early 19th century critics of Freemasonry, how would, how would we expect Freemasons to respond to a Kennedy assassination, an assassination conspiracy involving brother Masons? Most Freemasons might never be aware of the conspiracy and could respond according to their individual feelings. If they were made aware of a Masonic link, well arch Freemasons would be bound by their hosts to maintain their broader secrets. Murder and treason not accepted and warn their brothers of any of any threat of exposure. Royal arch Freemasons could be expected to defend their broader Freemasons and support any cover up of the conspiracy. Royal Arch Freemasons would use all the tools available to them to frustrate, confuse, and discredit anyone to challenge their story. Literally millions of American Freemasons of all ranks could be called upon as needed and with few questions to quietly work to remove any threat to the assassins and their control of the government. Those Freemasons who were called upon to help would keep their Masonic secrets and could expect to be rewarded for their fidelity to Freemasonry. Any Freemasons who violated their, free, their Masonic confidences would invite the wrath of the Brotherhood. As a student, Weissop had studied the, the great mystics. While an undergraduate, Weissop studied the ancient pagan religions and was familiar with the Eleusian mysteries and the theories of the great mystic Pythagoras. As a student, he drafted the constitution for a secret society model on the pagan mystery schools, but it was not until he was initiated into Freemasonry that Weissop's plan for the ultimate secret society was found. They, uh, this Michael Howard, the, cons the Occult Conspiracy, 1989, page 61. Weissop said, Behold our secret. Remember that the end justifies the means and that the wise out to take all the means to do good which the wicked take to do evil. Ralph F. Epperson, The Unseen Hand, 1905, page 81. His philosophy was, has been continued. To summarize, the Communist Code of Ethics is based upon the principle that the ends of revolution justify any means, any means, no matter how lawless, violent, dishonest, or indecent from the standpoint of accepted American standards of morality. House Report Number 276, Congress, First Session, page 26 to 29. Quote, no morality seemed to be the key foundation for the scheme. The group was founded on the premise that the end justifies the means and that the good of the order justifies calumnies, poisoning, murders, perjuries, treasons, rebellions, and all that men call and all that men call crime. Nesta H. West Webster World Revolution, page 297. This belief remains as the single biggest factor working in Freemasonry's favor. Decent folk find it incomprehensible that there could be individuals so evil as to actually try to take control of the world on behalf of Lucifer. In Freemasonry, everything has a double meaning. Thus, the candidate is practicing the occult throughout his degree work without knowing it. False interpretations are given to him to prevent him from suspecting the craft to be anything less than on the square. Another factor is that it rarely, if ever, does anything covered under its own name. In order to advance its agenda, it 
it establishes other organization to which it gives special assignments. Jesus Christ was recognized to novices as the grand master, and if Christ exhorted his disciples to despise riches, it was in order to prepare the will for the commu community of goods that should do away with poverty. Ibidem, page 12. Later, at the grade of priest, the initiate was told that the pretended religion of Christ was nothing else than the work of priests, of imposture and of tyranny. Ibidem, page 13. The success of socialism seems tied directly to eliminating religion. William Riley, Alstead, Civil and Religious Forces, 1890, page 165 to 166. Wise up like Lenin and Marx early publicly proclaimed that the state would wither away. In private, the Illuminati elite believed that the average man was too stupid to govern himself and that a self appointed inner circle or Illuminati would secretly rule. Robert Henry Goldsboro. Lines of Credit, Ropes of Bondage, 1989. The United States of America was a republic. However, the secret destiny of America was the accomplishment of a democratic form of government that illegally usurped the republic. When it was first settled, the purpose was to all for a new way of life free of uh, from the religious intolerance and political despotism that held Europe in its clutches. Manny P. Hall, The Secret Destiny of America, 1958, page 129. The Phil Philadelphia Convention at Jordandale, five months of secret sessions. Madison's Journal of the Federal Convention was not published until 1840 after everyone who was at the 1787 convention had died, Richard B. Morris, the Constitution, 1985, page 10. As originally drafted in the secret proceedings, the 1787 U.S. Constitution left out a public bill of rights altogether. Until the 1820s, college education was generally narrow and theological in character. However, a rising tide of relatively liberal talent on campus led to a new secular liberal arts orientation strongly supporting the era of material progress that was to transform the continent during the second half of the century that they would learn is that someone else told you what to think about, when to think about it, how long to think about it, when to stop thinking about it, when to think of something else, and someone else set up the secrets. The Carbonati Secret Society in Italy in the early 1820s was more than just power in the land and boasted branches and sub-societies as far a field as Poland, France, and Germany. Archon, Darrow, Secret Societies, 1961, page 100. Their origin was claimed to be in Scotland, where they took to tar charcoal burning to avoid suspicion of interior, ulterior motives. They set up their own three branch government and obeyed only their own laws. Evident, page 101. The subject of the society, the object of the society was to set up a body of men subject to the orders of the central body and to take action even against established governments. From the earliest recorded period of its existence, it formed a state within a state. Ibidem, page 103. The degree of grand elect was conferred on a candidate who was 33 years and 3 months old. The age of Christ on the day of his death. Ecatorn, Ica 1 page 163. I need to reread that phrase. 
the degree of Grand Edict was conferred to a candidate who was 33 years and 3 months old, the age of Christ, on the day of his death. It was revealed in the Catechism that the object of the organization was political and that it aimed at the overthrow of all tyrants. The hope was given. I, a free citizen of Osonia, swear before the Grand Master, the universe, we're talking about Lucifer here, the light bringer. I'm just reading their oath. Quote, I, a free citizen of Osonia, swear before the Grand Master, the universe, and the Grand Elect, good as cousin, to devote my whole life into the triumph of the principles of liberty, equality, and progress, which are the soul of all the secret and public acts of carbonarism. I promise that. If it be impossible to restore the reign of liberty without struggle, I will fight to the death. I consent, should I prove false to my oath to be slain by my good cousin Grant Elex to be fastened on to the cross in a large naked crown with thorns, to have my belly torn open, the entrails and heart taken out, and scatter to the winds. Such are our conditions where the seventh most secret degree, Principi Sumo Patriarcho, revealed the real object of Carbonarism and that it, its aims were identical to those of the Illuminati Ibidem, page 167. The candidate was sworn to destroy every government, whether despotic or democratic. Ibidem, page 168. The Jesuit war on the Vatican was terminated by the Congress of Vienna and by the secret 1822 treaty of Verona, Emmanuel M. Joseph. Son, the Federal Between Commerce Reserve Conspiracy and Rockefellers, 1968, page 4 to 5. The Jesuits were finally reinstated by Pope Pius VII on August 1814. In 1829, a secret society modeled after the Carbonari was formed to establish compulsory public education in the United States. Karl Marx. A key communist propagandist joined the highly secret seat in his church. A. Rolf Epperson, The Unseen Inn, 1985, page 91. In 1856, Mazzini initiated Elena Petrovska, Petrovna Blavatsky, 1831-1891, into the Carbonari. She was also an initiate of the Order of the Drosses. In 1866, she was fought under Ge she she was fought under Garibaldi and was wounded at Mantana. Lady Queen Borrow, page 530. Blavatsky wrote that it is Pinoza who furnishes perhaps the truest key to a portion of this unwritten secret, while Moses forbids graven images of him, whose name is not to be taken in vain, Spinoza goes further. He clearly infers that God must not be so much as described. Human language is totally unfit to give an idea of this being, who is altogether unique. Isis Unveil, 1877, page 2. 308. Some Spinozists fall into a senseless sort of skepticism called egotism, where everyone fancies himself to be the only being that exists, Madame Blavatsky said in a moment of frankness. What is one to do when, in order to rule men, it is necessary to deceive them? For almost invariably, the more simple, the more silly, and the more gross the phenomenon, 
the more likely it is to succeed, like the city of London's 9-11 hoax. Robert Kate Spencer, The Cult of the All Singhai, 1964, page 48. In 1871, Pike copyrighted his 861-page book, Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemason, Ralph Epherson, Epherson Leon Sinhan, 1985, page 223. Alper Pike stated, all true dogmatic religions come from the Kabbalah and led back to it. All that is scientific and great, it the religious dream of all the Illuminati, such as Bakmi, Swedenborg, St. Martin, and other similar, is borrowed from the Kabbalah. All the Masonic associations have their secrets and symbols to it. Morals and Dogma, 1871, page 744 to 745. On January 22nd, 1870, Mazzini wrote, to General Albert Pike about a super right which will remain unknown, to which we will call those Masons of high degree which we shall select. Through this supreme, supreme right, we will govern all Freemasonry, which will become the one international center, the more powerful because its direction will be unknown. Des Griffin, Fort Reich of the Rich, 1899, 1889, page 68, Lady Queen Borough, page 208-209, Adriano Lemmy, page 97, John 1820, Ephesians 5-11, Albert Pikery, organized the new and reformed Palladian Rite. Three supreme councils were established at Georgetown, South Carolina, Rome, Italy, and Berlin, Germany. Griffin, page 69. Albert Pike took control of the theosophical operations while Mazzini was in charge of the political operations. Ibidem, page 68. Pike was sovereign pontiff of universal Freemasonry while Mazzini was sovereign chief of political action. William T. Still, New World Order, The Ancient Plan of Secret Societies, 1990, page 123. On September 12, 1874, Decree confirmed a treaty signed by Arman Levy for the Jewish Bani Brit. Albert Pike authorized Jewish Freemasons to form a secret organization, Sovereign Patriarchal Council, to function side by side with the ordinary lodges headquartered in Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany. Lady Queenborough, page 288. Bernard Shaw, Bernard Shaw noted that compulsory labor with death as the final penalty is the keystone of socialism, and that opposition in a socialist state would have to be an underground conspiracy working in secret until it is strong enough for an open test of strength. In turn, the ruling clique is required to protect itself with a gigantic spy service. Fahe, page 98. The Federal Reserve was created in December 1913 when Woodrow Wilson signed the Glass Owen Federal Reserve Act. That bill had been the product of cloak and dagger machination by Wall Street financiers and their political mouthpieces, many of them in league with the City of London. Wall Streeter Frank A. Van der Lip, in his autobiography From Farm Boy to Financier, narrates that the secret confidence which planned the Federal Reserve was as secret indeed as furtive as any conspirator. Van der Lip was one of the insiders invited to the J. Kill Highland Club on the coast of Georgia in the autumn of 1910 by the senator Nelson Aldrich. 
the father-in-law of John D. Rockefeller Jr. Al Drake also invited Henry Davidson, Davi, Davison of J.P. Morgan and Corporation and Benjamin Strong, the future governor of the New York of the New York Reserve Federal Reserve Bank. Also on hand was Paul Warburg of the notorious international banking family, descended from the Del Banco family of Venice. As Van der Lip recounted, we were instructed to come one at a time and as inobstrusively as possible to the railway terminal of the New Jersey Little of the Hudson where Senator Aldrich private car would be in readiness attached to the rear end of a train for the south. In more recent times, Bill Moyer took a trip around the world with David Rockefeller. Later, he wrote in 1990, Secrecy is the freedom zealous dream of. No watchman to check the floor, no accountant to check the books, no job to check the law. The secret government has no constitution. The rules it follows are the rules it makes up. Bill Moyers, The Secret Government, The Constitution in Crisis, 1990, page 7. Throughout history, Jews have been the soul of every anti-Christian movement. There has not been a single important program or organization aimed at the overthrow of the church in which they cannot be found lurking. Thus, Jews were the main opposition to spreading the faith at the time of the Apostles, they were the ones who urged Nero to begin his persecution of Christians. They started Gnosticism, the first great heresy that threatened to destroy the church by confusing their doctrine. They have provided the inspiration and encouragement for almost every other heresy from Arianism and Trinitarianism in the 4th century to impersonifying, impersonating Protestantism in the 16th, chiefly by making always available their Talmud and Kabbalah, the sources and reservoirs of all anti-Christian blasphemy and filth, as it is also most evident in the nature of the criminal behavior and perverse attitude playing uh, plaguing society today and in our own day they this conceived brought into being and provided the membership for communism the roman catholic false church however although a child of apostate jury has a certain period of her history and in the strongest possible terms try to warm a uh, warn <laughs> warn and protect her children against the, these adversaries of all men, as St. Paul called them. Through the decrees of the, her popes and councils, she has obliged the Jews to live in ghettos, forbidden them to have Christian servants or to hold public office, required them to wear orange hats so as to be easily recognized and avoided. At one time or other, the Jews have been banished from almost every country in Europe, and not by merciless tyrants, but merciless tyrants, but by great so-called Christian rulers, like uh, Saint Henry II of Germany and Louis IX of France. Not until the 18th century when the freemasons began to take over the governments of europe did the jews really come into their own before that they had been obliged to work mostly on the ground exerting their influence in hidden subtle ways but from this time on they work in the open being formed for the purpose of combating christ and his church the masons surely so truly realize that to wage this war effectively they must enlist the aid of that people who had always been the backbone of the anti-christian army 
accordingly the Masons' terminology, their secret rituals, their philosophy were all taken over from the Jews. But the Masons' greatest stroke was to make use not merely of these perfidious traditions, but of the vital raging Jewish people themselves. As the Masons took over the nations of Europe, the Jews were released from the ghettos in which they had been for centuries confined and turned out on society. Thus was established the great aliens of empire. Thus was established the great influence in the empire of Satan, the Masons and the Jews, the Masons with their power, controlled government and business, plotting and planning at the highest levels, the Jews with their influence controlling the press and entertainment in situ insinuating their nervous, impure, and fidel values into all societies and corrupting it to the core. These two, which in every other respect are poles apart, have joined together for one reason, the destruction of the church and every Masonic Jewish scheme as this hand in view. Thus, their advocacy of internationalism Internationalism is partly due to the fact that they have loyalty to no country, but mainly it is an attempt to fight the church on a scale as large as Catholic as the church is herself. But by the grace of God, his churches is a little flock, is a little flock, and not the organized rabble of Rome and her once Protestant allot dollars. Very few people in this world have ever met a Christian in the sense of a born-again saint, and no one in any of the secret societies or man-made religion systems would know what to look for, what the fate is, and how to gauge it. The Mason's supreme ultimate objective is uh, so there, so they mysteriously declare, is to rebuild the Temple of Jerusalem. To this, of course, another objective which the Jews share, and though it may sound innocent, it is its it is in its implications terrifying. The Temple of Jerusalem is the traditional center of Jewish worship, which was destroyed in 780 by the Romans in fulfillment of our Lord's prophecy that there shall not be left a stone upon a stone. The establishment of a state of Israel gives the Masons and the Jews their first opportunity to try and achieve their objective of rebuilding this temple. However, when they do so, there will be there will not be one gentile, gentile Christian on earth to see it. This um, I would not be so sure, for the temple was destroyed as a stark unmistakable sign of God's wrath upon the Jews. It will be rebuilt, the Bible tells us so, but its reconstruction will not be of the Lord. But for the mystic body of Christ, the church is his temple. When the Antichrist will appear, then the Antichrist will appear. He will succeed in all the Masons and Jews have determined. He will rebuild a temple in Jerusalem. There he will sit as if he were God and force the mark of the beast. Thanks for listening. Reserve banking system usury calendar, the synagogue form of worship, rabbis, Kabbalah, and the beginnings of the Talmud and Pharisianism. Pharisianism. John Hyrcanus, Judas High Priest, seeking perhaps to heal the breach between the, the descendants of Esau and Jacob forcibly converted the Edomites or Edomines to Judaism. In 37 BC, Herod the Great succeeded John when the 
Romans made him ruler of all Judea, now called Idumea, because of the overwhelming number of Edomites in the population. Herod was an Edomian who married into John's family, the Maccabees. Thus, by the time of Christ, the majority of Jews were unrelated to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob by blood, and certainly not by faith. The religion of the Judeans was no longer the law and the prophets, but the traditions of the elders, which had been compiled as the Babylonian Talmud by about AD 500, and it is with us to this day. It populated the land of Canaan and afterwards spread throughout the world. Genesis 10 18. God made a covenant with Abraham and promised his seed would inherit the land of Canaan. As the promise unfolded, we find it that Abraham's seed was not to be Ishmael, but would come through his wife Sarah. Their son Isaac had twins. Isaac's firstborn, Esau, sold his birthright to his younger brother, Jacob. Esau then married two serpent seed women and an Ishmaelite, whose offspring in turn married with the serpent seed. Thus Esau committed genocide, for that was the end of the Edemic lineage in Esau, whose, nations be whose nation became known as Edom. Edom is the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. Malachi 1.4 It disappeared from history through miscegenation with Israel and has assumed the name Jew. God told Moses, when Israel conquers the land, the most history and purpose of the Freemasons and other secret societies. If you patiently read the following paragraphs of historical explanation, you may come to an understanding of the hidden histories of nature and science. Then we can discuss Freemasonry and you will see truths your worship for master as never contemplated. From the Garden of Eden, a battle has raged between two deadly enemies. The battle began when Lucifer incarnate the serpent, a man-like creature, great giant of a fellow, until God changed every bone in his body and put him upon his belly. Lucifer, being God's right-hand man, knew that God's plan was to bound a kingdom, knowing it would be inherited by Michael or Christ, he, began, he became jealous and set about gaining it for himself. God commanded man to multiply, fulfill and subdue the earth, and to have dominion over it, but by his wisdom Lucifer knew that as the seed of of a horse can fertilize a donkey to produce the hybrid mule God never created, so the seed of the serpent could fertilize the woman and create an hybrid species uncreated by God. And whenever the offspring of Eve by the serpent intermingled with the seed of Eden, the progeny, the progeny would always be serpent seed and not on the book of life. So he incarnated, he incarnated the serpent and seduced thee. From that time to this, there has been two races of people on this earth, the seed of Cain and the seed of Adam. Cain was begun of that wicked one, 1 John 3, 12. Abel was the son of Adam, who was the only son of God. Luke 3, 38. God placed enmity, that's hatred between us. Lucifer, Lucifer knew 
that by miscegenation he could exterminate the seed of Eden and thus fall heir of the kingdom of Christ. In the time of Noah, God destroyed the world with the flood because of miscegenation between the races of Adam and Cain. The serpent seen was in the ark utterly slay all of its serpent seeds habitants. Israel were disobedient and eventually found themselves dominated and ruled by these people. From before the days of Christ, there was intense hatred between Rome and the Jews. Jacob and Israel strove together in Rebekah's womb, and then Israel was born. Jacob grasped him by the heel, the hatred and revolty between these two enemies of God is to this day the root of Hertz geopolitical struggles. When the ten tribes of the northern kingdom began worshipping the pagan trinity, he dispersed them by the Assyrians. Assyrians. Later, when the southern kingdom adopted the pagan worship, God sent Nebuchadnezzar to destroy Israel and the temple and take the people captive to Babylon. At the end of the captivity, many of the Hebrew people declined to return. Remaining in Babylon, they intermarried and assimilated so that to, uh, for the next 1500 years, Babylon and not Jerusalem was Israel's theological headquarters. Whilst the Turnies brought with them the Babylonian fractional